Welcome back to the Mid Sack. It's a Sunday night here. It is a, it is a, ugh, it's a muggy Sunday night. That cool air, that nice little cool breeze we had to come in last week appears to be gone. The dog days of August are back. Cool breeze. Yeah, cool breeze is gone. And the funny thing is, it rained today and didn't do anything to cool it off. So anyway, just welcome. Just made it nasty. Just made it, yeah, made, made it swamp nasty. Anyway, so um, <coughs> I'm RJ. That is the redoubtable Tom Izzo himself. Welcome back to I Don't Disagree, segment two, NFL football. Uh, preseason quick recap tonight. Uh, the G-Men uh, muscled out a, a come from behind win against the AFC champion, defending AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals. Yes, it wasn't the entire first team. No, Joe Burrow didn't play. No, I'd say but, because the Giants beat them, they should be a playoff team. No, I'm saying you're looking for certain <laughs> things. I didn't say that at all. What I was looking at. Danny was, Dimes was 14 of 16, like you said. I'm saying this. He the, did throw another pick. He threw a pick. Um, but he was 14 for 16, so he moved the ball well. Um, they uh, they only ran the ball. They didn't run the ball well. The, 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 two, the two things that concerned me from this game tonight that I saw, which to me, this is where preseason does matter because these are things you got to iron up the game. The offense wasn't too bad. Um, the defense wasn't too bad. The special teams for the Giants tonight was atrocious. On back-to-back -back special teams play, now they gave up a 75-yard kickoff return after they had scored the go-ahead touchdown. And then after the, after what quarter was that? It was like in the second, second. Quarter, second quarter. And then this is in consecutive play. And then after they held um, Cincinnati to a field goal, the assuming kickoff they fumble the kickoff, oh, that's and Cincinnati record, recovers it on their like twenty four yard line. Which when we were talking about the Commanders and one of the, one of the problems their defense had last year was their offense kept putting them in bad spots. And this is, a, this is actually a common thing among bad teams. Right. Special teams is not a priority, and it bites you in the ass. Okay? So um, this, if I'm a Giants fan, this is more concerning to me than even the quarterback situation because you, the one thing you should be able to do is take care of the football and tackle, block and tackle. That's still, and that's what special teams is really all about. So it's not the Giants' strong points. No, it's no, it never it has. That's part of the reason why they've been they've been right. not successful because they don't they don't. And maybe this hopefully this new coach will do that. But tonight was not a good sign. Okay, that happened in the second quarter. Back to back special teams plays. That's not good. When, when they made their two Super Bowl runs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Their two very out of nowhere Super Bowl runs. Mm -hmm. They did those things very well. Little outside things. of those years. Yeah. But Tom Coughlin was that kind of coach. He yeah. stressed the little things. And good coaches have that one. They all do that. That's a common denominator, the fundamentals. It's a, it's, I know it's a, it's a boring term, but it's got teeth, oh, yeah. okay? And it can be the difference between teams getting in and getting out of the playoffs. I mean, so, yeah, this is a concern for the Giants. It's a legitimate Your one. Your foundation has to be based on fundamentals. Of course, it, yes, it has to be. If it's not, you'll it, crumble. You'll crumble, and mm -hmm. regardless of talent, talent mm -hmm. won't get you past that. Trust me, we've got a million examples of this. Okay, the bottom line is, um, if I'm a Giants fan, that is, that's the thing that needs to be cleaned up as much, because that's one-third of the game, man. Okay, if you have a good defense or if you can run the ball, you can you can actually at least play field position and compete, provided you take care of the football. And you play, and you you do in terms of special teams, you don't give good field position. You're either touchbacks or you're making good tackles and you're keeping them inside the 30 and making them making your opponent go 70 plus yards every time. That's hard to do in the NFL. Okay? And if your special teams does that, that sets your defense up for success. Sure. This crap tonight set their defense up for failure. Okay, it wasn't their defense's fault, but that's important. So preseason. And then Thibodeau got hurt. And then Thibodeau got hurt. Did you see that? I did see that. <laughs> what do you think about that play? It's a good question. Because <laughs> Brian Baldinger yeah. and D'Angelo Hall were saying uh, it was Thibodeau's fault, which I thought was a little like, I don't know. That's uh, I no. I remember when they said that. I was thinking, I don't look. I they know more about this than me, um, but so it was either a I tight end or an old lineman. Yeah, I don't I know. It was a tight end. Was coming off the line, you know, towards Thibodeau. Yeah. Thibodeau was rushing off the edge. Uh -huh. They were looking eye to eye, and the tight end dropped down and rammed his shoulder right into Thibodeau's knee. Into his knee. Cut and Baldinger yeah. said, yeah. Thibodeau needs to learn how to protect himself. I'm just like, damn, that's a that, – to me, that seemed like a cheap-ass block. It's – But I guess all, because they were both facing each other, it's not illegal. But he can't. But to drop down, first of all, they talk about protecting the knees. They have they have penalties for this kind of shit. But that's a, that's what he tried to do is take him out at the knee. He did it. Yeah, that's what he, he didn't did. Try to do it. No, he, he did. Didn't. That's what I'm saying. That, that's he what I'm hurt saying. Him. That's not to me. But Baldy and D'Angelo Hall both said because the letter of the law is is what you're allowed to take out the knee if they're 
I think. I guess if they, you're face to face, they never threw a flag on the play. Ice. No, they, they didn't throw a flag. No. So obviously that block is considered legal. Right, but this do you think what, it's cheap and dirty? Uh, yeah, I think it's. I think it should be outlawed mm-hmm. because of what just, what you just said. You could take another guy's career on that. Yeah. You can't listen. But the the thing, the reason I think per football rules it's not illegal is because they were face to face. Here's if. The, if Thibodeau had been engaged with somebody else, yeah. and he came out of nowhere and hit him in the knees, yeah. then not only would have gotten a flag, there would have been no question that it's dirty. Sure. I think. But maybe no, I'm not saying I agree there. I'm just saying what I'm saying is is that the, there all these rules are set up for the offense already. The defense has no, this is a rule to protect the defense. Right. That's a safety play. It's a safety play. This should be a no-brainer. What you should not be able to chop block at the knees. And they actually have that call already in there. Right. So now it's about you But know, I think what, it's only considered a chop if it's if, if it's he, like I said. Yeah, you're he not engaged. See it. Right. Yeah, he has, it's, yeah, he's unaware that you're there. He's defen- right. considered defenseless. Right. Because I'm blocking somebody yeah. else and you boom. So but my question would be like to that, you don't know when a guy's gonna do that. Mm-hmm. You can't. You don't know when a guy's going to do that. And that's what they I mean. How do you how do you defend yourself better when you don't know? You know that it can happen, right? But you, that could happen see, on the Baldi, first hit, the saying, second hit. The, how do you know? Baldi's saying a lot of times in a situation like that, defensive ends will actually like hop backwards and put their hands down to okay. kind of like if they anticipate, right? Like so, ba- the good ones, basically the experienced ones, do anticipate. It. Okay, all right. So you don't just rush in there. Shoulder down, yeah. like, oh, this guy's just going to ramp shoulders with me. No. People don't do that in the NFL. Sure. They're smarter than that. Yeah. In college, two big guys see each other, yeah, boom, yeah. they're just going to. It's sumo wrestling. Yeah, it's sumo yeah. wrestling. Yeah. Apparently, in the NFL, according to Baldinger and D'Angelo Hall, that's not what they do. So that and ball, uh, that block was obviously right. legal. It's, well, it's not only legal, it's very common. Okay. Like Baldinger was saying, that'll happen to you two or three times a game. And I was like, Geez. Well, maybe it will. I mean, look. And I guess uh, running backs can do that to you too. That's well, why in, so blitz, guys in blitz pickup, that's why yeah, so they guys can, jump over. Because if the guy coming at you is a 6'3", 255 linebacker, and you're a 5'8", 175 pound halfback, that's what you're you probably do. you can you may maybe have a choice. So in that <laughs> situation, so, yeah. now this was different because this is like a tight end guy. It's a big. These guys yeah, are both. They big. were both. They're probably big. the same size. Yeah, they're comparable. Most DNs yeah. are like tight end size. Well, yeah, they're usually very tall, and yeah. they're somewhere between two sixty and three hundred or two ninety. Right. They have that speed off your little yeah. Most of the tight ends of today are that. Are 6'4". You know, right. and yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. Six four no. well, it was a tight end who did it. Right? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, look, I don't know what the, I didn't like to play. Of no, course, I, it's my player that got hit. Well, no, but I, I mean, understand why he didn't. He could, what if he could have taken exactly. his knee out? Yeah, I'm not saying you're wrong there. And I hope it didn't seriously to, hurt him. To me, it's a C, but he was taken off the field. We don't know mm-hmm. what happened. Right. Him. But this is my point. Okay? Is that, I, look, I understand you want... You can block low without hitting the knee. Mm-hmm. You can hit the waist, or above the. You can hit the waist and 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 slow the guy down without damaging his knees. Because you can go thigh and give a nice Charlie horse. You could, yeah. But I'm saying that the waist would be to me make the most sense. It's the same if you're above the waist or at the waist. At least then there's let it minimizes. Not that they still but can't see. I guess injuries, for the but, little guys, the running back, he doesn't want any part of those thighs either. No, but I'm saying, but if you put a shoulder into the the, the, be- the belly, okay, and you, you stand him up, or you still, at least stop the penetration from the. That, I mean, what's wrong with that? As long as it's not spearing. Don't leave with your helmet, obviously. Well, if then you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah, we're well, going to hurt both. Yeah. But I'm saying if you leave with the shoulder, like when you're taught to tackle, but now you're blocking, mm-hmm. you, just don't, you just don't wrap your arms around. Yeah. See, all. that guy led with the shoulder right into the knee. I okay. hate it. Yeah. I mean, he literally, boom, right into the knee. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, I look, I this is the thing about the – I'd have to look at the rule. Yeah. But there wasn't a flag thing, well, no, so apparently it didn't sound like it was against. Yeah, no, but I'd like to read what that, how that is written, mm-hmm. because there, maybe there's some room mm-hmm. for interpretation. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so look, the Giants won their two and zero in preseason. Uh, there is some positive. Danny Dimes at least looks accurate. Um, Saquon Barkley is healthy. Looks like he's running pretty good. I don't think um, he played tonight. No, I took him out tonight. I think they're going to run. They're going to play him in game three. They're going to play. He'll probably play. I a hope half. so. They'll probably play a whole. Usually in game three of the preseason, that's the one they always used to play the start. They play at least the whole first half. So the, to me, Game Three is the one that I was always tuned in to watch because I know that's where you get the best litmus test or look at what they might look like on opening day because they're, they're going to play at least a half. A half Belichick would play course. them. So Belichick would play them into the third quarter if they were playing well. Belichick had a, a rule: if they're playing well, they played a half. If they played bad, they're playing third quarter because you got to salvage something out of getting tail kicked. So, and I understand why he did that. Now, does that put them more at 
risk for injury necessarily. Yeah, but it's football. I mean, you can get her taking a shower. Okay, you can have to, you get her not you get her away from the football field. So it's still football. So in event, the Giants there's some positives and the special team things is definitely a concern for me. Um, Tyrod Taylor looked pretty solid again tonight, uh, but Danny Dimes also looked he's looked accurate. Um, that might come down to is 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 Dimes slated as the starter? or Is this an open competition? Do you know? Um, I'm pretty sure Daniel Jones is the starter, but I haven't been following him long enough to know okay. if that's well. He started. Yeah. It's been him. So you I think it's kind of known that he's the starter. If something were to change, that would be a surprise, I think, to most. Okay, but I don't think that's out of the realm. Although yeah. going 14 for 16, that's pretty solid. That's better than solid. That's yeah, it's over 90. percent But he threw a pick. He threw a pick. Now again, I have to which look is at like that, that one yeah. thing where you're like, I mean, you know, this would have been a really great game, Danny. And then but, shit, <laughs> you know, I, I don't mean to be yeah. looking down, no, but I, I was mean, I was uh, researching blocking below the waist. Okay, um, that's fine. So if you're researching something relevant to the yes, that's yeah. totally. So I mean, so it says a lot of times those chop chop back blocks or crack back blocks, cut cut blocks, um, happen on change of possessions and on okay. kicking. Blocks. Oh. Yeah, Thibodeau ex exits game with the injury. There's that one. But I, I'm not getting a lot of good info here. Uh, but they were, um, at least in the first two games, they were playing against pretty solid organizations. Right? Pats yeah. and the Bengals. And the Bengals. You yeah. think that's good? Yes, I do, because those teams take their preseason seriously. So you get some practice. And then you get some good team. reps. I think they are. I think mm -hmm. there's some things you can take from them. Um, okay. Danny Dimes' pick was, and I forgot what happens. I saw the tail. Did you see the? I just saw the whole thing. It went through, the, showed it? It went through the hands of the tight end. They blow it up. They blow it up? Oh, you're on a video? I have video. They show it. It goes off the fingertips of, is it 85? 85. And the bangle, yeah, said, the bangle guy dives to the ground like like uh, Julian Elm in the Super Bowl. That's the catch he made. It, was, it wasn't, I wouldn't pin that one on Daniel. It wasn't Dimes. a bad thing. No, it wasn't because it went through the hands of the guy that should have caught it, number one. And then the, the, the safety made a spectacular play to go down and get it. It was like, and he was 10 yards away from the play. He ran up, dived, and caught it. So I wouldn't pin that one on Danny Dunn. I would say he had probably the best game he's had in a while in terms of accuracy. So, but the special team thing would definitely concern me because of preseason. That's things you're looking for. Those are things that have to be from the yeah. get-go because that can cost you right out of, right in week one. That shit can cost you again. Yeah. Okay. And in the NFL, where and then you're chasing team, that game for the rest of the yeah, season. Yeah, and, and you know this well as I do, Tom. In the NFL, one game because only 17 of them is magnified by like a factor of 10. Okay, that's why these games. That's why every Sunday is like a heat because one game can change everything. It literally can't. So, um, which is so different from the, the other, other sport three. I love, yeah. baseball. With baseball, yeah. Where one where game, man, shit. In one game, everybody's like, it's one game. And the one sport you can definitely say, <laughs> <laughs> hey, my last time we have 161 games <laughs> to go. <laughs> I like that in basketball and hockey. Too. It is. It is. No, it is. I mean, I mean, they're playing 82. They're playing 82, and that's a long season too. But it's half. But of it's baseball. half of baseball. It's half of baseball. Just slightly just, below half. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, um, those are some good things and bad about the Giants. Patriots, real quick, looked pretty solid down against Carolina. Carolina's not a great team. But uh, Mac Jones did play. He looked pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. Had a nice 45-yard completion down McCorkle. the sideline. McCorkle looked good. The defense actually looked good. But, again, Carolina's, I don't know what their offense is. Because I don't know who the well, starter's going to be. Did, what did Baker look like? Did he start? Did he start? I think he did start. I caught it. I, I, I missed the first two seasons. I didn't even realize they played. I'm kind of interested uh, to see what he did. Did he start? Uh, Baker was, where was he? well. The, the other quarterback was. They picked off the other guy. Well, well, the third guy, Walker, twice. Zappy, Zippy, Zoopy threw another pick. Um, Who's Walker? You're talking about for Carolina. Yeah, he's like the third corner. So who do they have? They have Baker, Sam Darnold. Yeah, here's the funny part about it. Neither one played. No, Baker nor Sam Darnold. Neither one played. Walker and Corral played. Hmm. What the? I don't know what that. What that's all. Okay, and, but, played um, for, and everybody played yeah. for the Pats? And, um, uh, Mac Jones played the first quarter. Okay, that's pretty good. And he went four for eight, threw a walk completion. He was sacked once. Patriots ran the ball really well, uh, 126 on 29 carries, did well there. Yeah. 
Um, the defense looked really good, but again, I don't know who either those two quarterbacks are, and probably neither do any of you. Okay, so um, grain of salt, right? He's right about that, grain of salt. But special teams looked at all. They only gave up really. They gave up really three points most of the game, so they looked pretty solid. But Carolina's weak, so, you know, whatever. So anyway, but no major injuries. The big thing for me is no major injuries. So no. Nobody, nobody major got knocked out of the Patriots game. That's what I care about. So one thing about football. This time of year that I love, Hard Knocks started. Who's the team? This Have year? you watched it? No. Who's the team? Detroit. Detroit. Lions. Detroit. Yeah. So I started the first episode last night. I, I fell asleep towards the end. Okay. Their coach is a maniac. Mm-hmm. He is a certified <laughs> my job. He's a, yeah. He's one of those. Yeah. Um, he's a few yeah. He's a few books short of a scat. So it's weird though, because like when can he, I say that? He's what? He's a few book, books short of a scat a stack. I guess you can. I mean, it might be like... What's a stack? It'd be a crazy a stack one. like six? No. What's a stack of books? Stack of books? What's a standard? Eight. Okay. So Depending on thickness. Thickness? Well, yeah. Definitely thickness. Right, because if you had three books that were so like thick... Like encyclopedias, stacked, you'd yeah. You'd say, man, that's a stack of books. <laughs> that's a stack of But if you had three. three thin books, you'd be like, no, I got a few books here. It sounds like a solid number. Eight? Eight, yeah. Because today you're gonna kind of you'll eight, probably get a you probably like get a eight, mix. You might get three or four. Books. You might get three or four big ones and then three or four small. But even eight, eight half inch books. books. You got eight anyway, things in a stack. These are a few books short of a stack. All right. All right. Anyway, but, but yeah, I'm he's not nuts. sure if you're allowed to say that just on, you know, mental type of jokes these days. I like him. He's entertaining. Yeah. No, he's very person. I like him. I think but he's like, when they had their first press conference and he came out and said they were going to be biting. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. We're going to be biting and fighting. Their, I can't remember what he said. We're going to rip them. Right. And I thought it was kind of clownish. I thought it was a little clownish. But as you found out. But after seeing it in Hard Knocks, mm-hmm. and maybe it's just the way they film these things, I always end up loving the people on Hard Knocks. Yeah. Like. Because you're seeing them. I love Dak, Dak Prescott now. And I'm a Giants fan. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but you see these guys away from the. No, it's not. No, it's, you can appreciate and respect other t- teams' talent. Right. No, but I'm saying the way and, they and, film it, it really humanizes people. And this coach, he he came in and did this opening speech about like what they were going to be about and mm. all this and all that. And I was like, hmm, that that sounded pretty good. Yeah. And then he was like screaming at him in the middle of the practice, and yeah, um, he did thirty up downs. Oh, he's, I'm telling you, he's a, you know, where you he's, hop up and he then you played, hit the floor and you bounce up. He played in the NFL. I know. And he, he, still he looks has like a, he could still play. He looks like he's still, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing about him. He looks I, like he's still good. I know he couldn't yeah, because okay. he's old. He's old. But, man, he, he, he's wow. sitting there and I'm like, this guy is freaking sculpted. Yeah. And then he does 30 up-downs and he was, you could tell he was struggling. Yeah. But, like, he did it. Yeah, yeah. he's like, I would have gotten through, like, two of those. <laughs> And been like, all right, he was a professional keep it up, athlete. Keep it up, yeah. And he, yeah, but that's part of what. Some they're great coaches have another thing. They can, they can actually the ones that can that still can do it. They go out and they can physically demonstrate some of things. The, listen, as a former player, when I saw a coach go out there and still do something physically, I gained more respect for them because I know a lot of them can't. But yeah. a guy that keeps himself to still go out so he can actually physically show you because a lot of guys are visual learners, a lot of athletes that helps. And a guy who, who maintains himself to be able to still do that, you you respect. Him. But this is a good Mr. this is a good topic. Mm-hmm. Are the great coaches ones that demonstrate though? They simplify and they make it easy. Whether it's through physical demonstration or the way they explain it, they make sure it, they can comprehend. But but, but they, I would they are good at that. But I would argue they're good at decipher they're good at, at deciphering and breaking things down to make it understand. Okay, but let me turn this into an argument. Sure. Why so not? that we can agree or disagree, or don't. I would argue that most of the greats are not ones that did it or in practice do it. Okay. Most of the greats are those that can transfer that information, you know, through information. I, I, that's possible. I don't know. Could be. Well, no, don't just act like that. Think through it with me. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, that's, I've seen a lot of young coaches that are very good that can physically still at the college level and at the pro level. And also, no, but like, who are the greatest coaches of all time? Just name them. Regardless of sport? Yeah. Right now, there are two of them in my backyard. Right now, we're back in Bill Belichick. Okay. Did any of them do 30 up downs in practice? Hell I not. was never at I don't know. Here's what I do know. When oh, right now, we're back, will you let me finish? Bill my Belichick sp- was doing up downs. It'd be all over you. I didn't say, I was talking about right now, back, not Bill Belichick. 
Yeah, same thing. He was no, he cigars. when he was coaching. When, no, back when the Celtics when he started the Celtics, he was out there. He was in full gear, like he was going to play. And I don't know how much of any drills he actually did, but I don't know. I was never at practice. Bill Belichick. Other than I, I heard the story of him once uh, demonstrating a long snap, like a long snapper. He got down. He, he snapped the ball back to the kicker. But that's the only I've ever heard of him doing anything physically. Doesn't mean he's never done anything, but that's the only I've ever heard. Of. That's what I'm saying. And that was like probably over ten years ago. If where you he, think of all the greats, you've never heard things about like them doing it in practice, right? Billy Donovan was a great coach. Could still do it in practice. Heard of him? He could, he won back to back. He would like play scrimmages he, with. His he would go out and physically or? do the drills with them. Some of the drills. Show them how to do it. Not just tell him, but he would actually break it down. He's like, what I want it to look like. Do it. Still. Again, he was a young, he was in his 30s when he was coaching. So he could physically still, like, this guy's doing 30 up down. Like, he's still young enough where he can do some of that stuff. But I again, I don't know what the majority, like, so, I don't know what the majority number is. So, I mean, I or what the number, which way it would tip. I don't know. But, like, I'm just saying, I, I think it's a good conversation to have around leadership style. And you're just saying, I don't know. But I think you do I have don't. an opinion on it. My opinion is... Guys that are great were great long before anybody outside the locker room. So I would, I, I know when I was coaching, and even actually I was, I was coaching this morning at 49 years old, and I was out there doing these drills, and I had torn my Achilles tendon. And I was out there doing some of the drills, demonstrating to, to my son and three other guys that I was coaching that morning. So, but I also know that guys that are great are great long before you and I know. It's just a question of when does the world acknowledge it. But people that have been working with him will tell you this. I knew the day I saw that person that he or she or they were going to be right away. In fact, Bill Parcells tells a story about Belichick when he was a defensive uh, defensive backs coach. He wasn't even a defensive coordinator yet in New York, and how he was demonstrating, uh, showing a coverage on, and had one of the defensive linemen that was in the meeting opened his mouth, and Belichick told him to turn around and shut the fuck up. He goes, you know, you may not care about this, but these are, this is the back seven. If they screw this up, you ain't going to have a chance to get this guy. So you pay attention or get the fuck out. Bill Bel Parcells tells the he knew that day Bill Belichick was going to be a great coach. <laughs> Nobody else knew it, but, but he knew it, and he but was that's right. My point. So you don't know, like when you say Bill great Bel coaches, how do where, define when they're great? Are they the great when we acknowledge it, or when yeah, they? I'm talking about the great coaches. The great coaches might have been able to do it at one time, but when we see them, they're 67 years old and they can't do it anymore. But maybe they, yeah, they that's did. That's a good point. That's what I'm saying. I don't know when that I think happened. You're like instead of just answering, you're making it harder than it is. All I'm saying is. I don't when know it comes the to like when I was a people leader for my occupation, mm -hmm. you know, working for a corporation. Yeah. One of my biggest things was lead by example. Okay. Yeah. But somehow, I think it always ended up failing because why? Because it was easy for me to be the example. It was hard to help my people be the example. You know what I'm saying? So I think there were times where I was uncomfortable as a people leader. So I didn't know how to lead. So what I did was I go, all right, I'm just going to be the example. Okay. You know? Yeah. And sometimes I think. Like, you think it backfired on I you? think, yeah. Why is it? It backfired on me. Why? Because, because I was getting in uncomfortable situations as a leader and moving to my comfort zone. Right? So that's almost like what I see with this guy. He is a head coach now. Yeah. His comfort zone is actually still playing. Even, even though he's, even though he's, right, even though he's distant, you know, you know, mm -hmm. he's had several coaching opportunities on staffs with other teams. Yeah, he's, um, he's bounced around. He's to bounced get, around. To get I, to, yeah, because you gotta go up the ladder. But right? not for too long, I don't think. No, he actually not that so, long. So when I see this, and, and I'm, I'm telling you what I did, mm -hmm. so that doesn't mean that's what he's doing. Sure. But I think, okay, so if we're talking about me leading people who are doing a customer service role, right? Mm -hmm. And I would get uncomfortable and feel like, man, this isn't going good. Mm -hmm. What can I do to change the direction of this team? I think sometimes I would be scared of stepping out of my comfort zone to fix something. Sure. And I go, well, I can do their job really well. So maybe if I just get on the phones and talk to people and show them an example of what it is, that'll turn the tide. They'll, they'll be like, oh, man, this dude's a real deal. He knows how to do this. But really, I'm just running from the real solution, which is me helping this team come together to reach a common goal. But some, but part of that, okay, is is helping them improve at their job. Sure, no, no doubt. And if you and listen, I, I you can go anywhere you want with this, whether it's the sports world, corporate America. 
the best leaders are the ones that will get out there in front and also do yes. it. Yes, yes. And I don't think that back, I think the person's, he's not all talk. He actually can do it. No, I that agree backs with backs up what you're saying. That is, a, it's a valuable tool to yeah. have. Yeah. But if that's where you always go, there's some things that you can't do for them. You ha They have to do it at some yeah, point. Yeah, you have to know when to do it. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I agree with I agree with that. So I yeah, there's situations where, no, you've got to, I can't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, no. it's like sometimes your team needs you to be the leader. Don't come stand beside me. No. Stand up on the hill and tell us where the fuck we're going. Yeah. No, and, that's true. And I think yeah, there's both. There's right. two things can be true. Yeah. yeah. So, but but I just think leaning on that too much and becoming trying to show them you are them too much can backfire. I think yeah, it can get tiresome. It can get tiresome. Like they show, can if you're doing it all the time, you can they show can lose, show off. Right. They can lose respect. Uh, no, for you. there's a line there. I agree. Yeah, with that. It can. And I'm not saying that's what's happening, yeah. but it it reminds me of myself, and I think I made that mistake as a leader. So you were doing it too much. Yeah. Anytime, well, that, right, well, anytime that's there was something I had to do that was uncomfortable for me, I think I would go, well, let me let me just go be an example. Because it's hard to explain for me that I can show you. Right. Well, it's just what they don't they don't need an example right now, right? Like maybe they need me to come down on somebody and tell them, hey, if you don't do your job better, you're going to get fired. Mm -hmm. But instead I go, you know what? Let me just show them how to do a good job. You know, sometimes your team doesn't need you to do 30 up downs. They need you to go into the quarterback room Tell the, tell the guy to stop being selfish. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't need you to run suicides with them. They need you to go to that player and say, hey, why aren't you passing the ball in basketball? Right? Like, sometimes the example is not enough. Sometimes you have to get in people's asses. You have to do real coaching where you're not showing. You're getting somebody to realize it in themselves. Well, does that make sense? It does. What I would say to that is the – I think it, it depends – well, it's a case by case. It, without a doubt. I think there's there are times like, for example, in football or in basketball, the two things that I played. Uh, um, so there's times when you got to show them, and there's times like, you know, this guy's a senior, he should know this. He should now, know this. Versus this guy's a freshman, you got to show him. Mm -hmm. You don't got to show the senior. The senior should be able to tell him, and he, she, or they should understand it because it's not their first rodeo. Right. If it's a freshman who's up there because they're supremely talented, but they have, then <laughs> okay, that's different. So I think it's it depends on the situation. I agree with you though, because if it's someone who's been to, and you're working for you for seven years, you shouldn't have to go down and read them right. the riot and tell you no, you can read that person the riot. If it's a guy who's 30 days on the job or two months on the job or whatever, and he doesn't know certain then that one you may have to go down. And because then you can say, look, I showed you how to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna show you again. Yeah. Okay, because that's a it's a case by case. Mm -hmm. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. And maybe you didn't differentiate, maybe the problem you have is. You didn't, which situation required which approach? Where, exactly. Okay, no, that's fair. Instead okay. of adapting my leadership style. Yeah. And that's why, I'm not saying. But that comes with experience, I'm, too. Yeah, exactly. you got to learn that as a leader. Sure. I, I know that I had to learn time. that. As, yeah, it takes, it takes time. time. Yeah. I mean, and I guess, for me, it took too much time. To okay. where I wasn't adaptive enough, and I finally said, you know what? It's not a good fit for me. And that can be true, yeah. yeah that can I mean, be true, yeah. too. Because I finally said, you know what? I know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. But it's not what I enjoy doing. It's not what I want to do. Yeah. So I'm avoiding it. So because yeah. of that, this isn't the right fit for me. I understand. And that doesn't mean that this Lions coach, that's who he is. No, we don't I'm know just, yet. This right. is a second. He's I'm going to a second year. When I see year, him right? doing this, it yeah. makes me think of me, and I'm like, oh, I hope he doesn't make Overdo the it. mistakes yeah. that I did. Yeah. Trying to lead by example yeah. and prove I'm one of you. Yeah. And then you realize there's sometimes they don't even want you to be one. No, and I can see to your to point, like maybe a veteran sees that. Like, Give me a show. But mm -hmm. if it's a guy in his second or third year or four, younger, maybe mm -hmm. he that. Yeah, no, there's a line there. Mm -hmm. And you got an, and, and a sport like football where you've got both in the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, no, I can definitely see why you'd say that. Um, but he know here's what I would hope. Um, and I don't know this, I don't know the man. Yeah. Um, coaches, the good ones have a, they know their locker room. They know there are things that they can do and there are things they can't. They know their they know their audience. Let's put it that way. A good coach knows the, his audience or her audience, and they know what buttons to push and they know how to push them. Okay, and there are things they won't do because maybe if it's a football team, maybe it's a veteran group and there's not a lot of young people. They're not going to go in there and do the rah rah sis boom bah crap with a, a bunch of thirty year olds who have already been there and done that. Then it's the about the bottom line, and that's what I think you're talking about. And then with well, the also though, sometimes 
you know, eventually a leader on the team has to step up and be the example. Yes. That's much more powerful of course than is. the coach being the example. Yes. Yes. When a leader on the team says, coach doesn't need to come out, out here and show us how to run through drills yeah. or show us how to do our job if you're in a corporate setting. Yeah. I am a leader on this team, and I'll show you right here. Yeah. And if you don't do it up to your ability, I'll call you out on it. Yeah, that makes sense. Peer feedback. We talked yeah. about this. Yes, yes, we did. We had you a know, peer feedback. That's, yes. To me, that's, that's the ultimate is mm -hmm. when you're leading a team where you – empower people to be leaders mm -hmm. among the people who are actually doing the work. Yeah. I always struggled with that. No, but that's fair. I think you're probably not alone on that. <laughs> probably not. Probably a lot of people have that issue. That's not, that, that's not an easy solution either. No. It's not. So it comes with time and experience and things. You know, your background may, may help you there or yeah. may not. You haven't had those kind of situations a lot. So, um, but no, that, I totally understand that. And may, it remains to be seen if this guy is like that. Yeah, we'll see. Or not, we'll see. But he's definitely personable. He's likable. We know he's got passion. Um, players love those kind of things in a coach and he's been a player, he's been in the league. So they know he's been there as a player. So they know he's been, in, he's been in their shoes and that helps too, in terms of credibility. The guy who's, he, he played on this field. He knows, yeah. he knows shit. Okay. So no, that's good. So we'll see what happens. Hey, look, I'm personally rooting for Detroit. I know I have friends that have been kind of yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean, they would be, they'd be America. hate Detroit? They'd be America. They've never been good enough to hate them. That's I mean, what I'm saying. Like, Nobody, they, I think anybody know, would be like, you know, if I had to sign up for a Super Bowl champ right now, Detroit would probably be. I know the Giants, of my team? I know the be, Giants uh, aren't going to win it. Yeah. So I'd go ahead and sign up for a Detroit Super Bowl. I would love to see them. Like, I would love that to see city, them. come on. Right? Oh, they need it. Yeah. I think Detroit would need, needs it. Mm -hmm. They haven't had a team. Like, the Tigers were good a few, but they, they don't have consistent, Not you know, since the Pistons. Not, yeah, really. You're right. I mean, so, and they had, dude, they had Barry Sanders. They had Megatron. They've had some. So, they had, Matt Stafford goes and wins the Super Bowl in his first year. Oh. But that's a heartbreaker if you're a Trent. I mean, and that admittedly, tells you, I'm not a hockey fan, but are the Red Wings? They were very good. The okay. Red Wings were a dynasty. They were, I'm sorry, they were very, they were the, there was the one, yeah, Detroit is a hockey town. Too, though. I've been up there. That That's the one team they can hang around. Detroit, but even they aren't good. It's, they, right. it's literally like they're on the, they're, we're, Detroit's one of the original six hockey But teams. who do you think owns Detroit in terms of the sports team? It's got to be them. They've been so good for so long. But that's not always true. Well, the Lions, Sometimes there's another team that's more beloved. Than when Barry are. Sanders was there, there was just as much hype for the Lions as the Red Wings because of Barry. Because Barry Sanders was the that Pistons dude. have had some good runs. Well, that was the late. Yeah, but that was they had a, that team was loaded. I mean Isaiah, Joe. I mean the, when, now and when then Grant, again, when, when they Grant had Hill, Billups when and Grant, they, they won in 04. They did, mm -hmm. and then Grant Hill showed up, and it looked like uh oh. And then they somehow let him go. That was another monumental mistake. Why would you let that guy? I mean, where did he, he go? The Orlando. That was late, wasn't it? No, he was going. He was going into his prime. He was twenty seven. He went to Orlando? Why don't I remember Tracy that? McGrady. They were going to work together. It never happened because Hill got hurt the first year. Mm. And he missed. Grant Hill basically missed his prime. Did he end up playing for Orlando or did he go somewhere they, else? Yeah, he did, but sparingly they ended up going somewhere. He won comeback player of the year in Phoenix. That's what I was going to say. But he, was, he literally missed four and a half years. Like, we, he missed. We never saw a Grant Hill in his prime. And you know what's scary about that? He made five All-NBA first teams before the age of 27. It was supposed to be his league when Jordan left and then he got hurt. Okay. And we never saw him from 28 to 33. We don't know. And he made the, he's in the Hall of Fame because Paul Pierce, Hall of Famer, never made one All-NBA first team. This guy made five before the age of 27. Okay? I mean, think about this. And he went against the Pistons. He was going against the Bulls when Jordan and Pippen were in the middle of that period. And he was he was matching the two of them. He was, he was, it was there. And Doug Collins was cool. Coached both. Said, the difference is they have, we have one Michael Jordan. They have two. That's what he was saying. And he wasn't wrong because Hill's numbers backed that up. I mean, just he was amazing. And I never seen the guy six eight with that. You watch Grant Hill's prime of the year. You can't believe his first step. It was just it was it was like Tim Hardaway. It was like Allen Iverson. That he was six eight. It was he's got a crush on Grant Hill. Watch the video. No, I'm. But you do. The tape don't lie. You do. The tape don't lie. Admit it. The tape don't lie. Do you love the man? The best high school player I've ever seen. Do you love him? No. Do you have a crush on him? I Go like on. him. I like his game. And, I, and by the way, I like him as a person. Grant Hill was a kid. Been a, tell you what, tell you what kid was raised right. Uh, that kid has never blinked in the wrong direction. You don't, know, he, you don't know him. Though. No, but I've read up on him. I know. And trust me, you won't. You, go ahead, no, I, he never had any scandals. I, I triple dog dare you to find something on him. No, I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to do that. You won't. You won't find anything. because He's never done anything wrong in his life. So, <laughs> well, come on. Well, not, not that that would hurt anybody else. <laughs> so anyway. No, no, um, no. We're going to... Uh, End this segment. Hold time. on, I wanted to ask you a, qu a question. Now, I, I know I said I had to leave early. Yes. But I'm, 
I'm starting to have like all oh. these pontifications about. Here comes the genius. Now the genius shows up. <laughs> yeah. See, eventually he comes out. It just takes like you have to, it's like fighting the jaws. Like you got to sit there and get him on the front, and you get him in the but eventually he gets there. It just takes three barrels to bring him up. So <laughs> just like, I've been thinking about this coaching conversation. Yes. Um, and you know, adapting leadership styles. Yeah. So do you think it started making me think of like what truly is coaching? So do you think coaching is on one hand, my, part of my mind says coaching is it's not getting people to do things. It's creating an environment where they can do something in the in the best way possible, in the smoothest, you know, uninhibited, no barriers. Mm -hmm. They can get something done that they're there to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So on one hand, I feel like that's coaching. Yeah. Right? Do that in any way you can. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, though, I think some people would argue, no, it's not just creating an environment where somebody can do something. It's actually creating that environment and motivating them to do it. What do you think? Because I do think that motivating is different than coaching. It's hard to do because motivation, you can motivate anybody for 72 hours. But then you have to find ways to keep motivating. There is an yeah, art. I'm there talking about that. a season there, Yeah, there is an art to that, by the way. And that, it's important. It's a vital part of coaching, but there's different ways to so do it. So you think motivating you, is part of coaching? Yes, it is. I, coach I would argue like that it's not. It is. I think it's... In addition to, well, that's part. It's a part of it. I mean, you have to. And again, everybody motivates in different. There's different ways to motivate. Here. There's not one way to do it. Okay, I'm just saying that to me, if if it's team sports, I'm not saying you know if in the in the corporate world motivation you should have the, motiv the motivation should be you bring home a paycheck to support for your. You don't have to. Motivate. But that's what it is yeah. in sports too. But I'm saying if it's the high school level, like we're not paying, well, getting paid. Let's, yet. let's take that off. Or if you're just saying the pro level. Yeah, let's just talk about pro. Well, you want to stay in the league too. If you're bad, you're not going to be around very long. So, is that just about making money? You want to, but isn't that have a true career? in corporate too? Performance based. It is. Should motivation just be based on? I mean, should you? Should that be enough to motivate you? Yeah, but here's the problem: there's one teeny tiny little itty bitty human. Mm -hmm. Human. No, I agree. That and motivation is necessary, but well, that's shouldn't that be considered like an additional thing outside of coaching? Because I think coaching is creating that headspace, creating that emotional space where someone can be themselves and reach their potential. Mm -hmm. Whereas motivating is like, hold up, no, I'm coaching you, dog. I'm not motivating you. you like, if you want me to motivate you too, pay me more. <laughs> I haven't seen or heard. Again, this may or may not be true. I have never heard of a scenario where the word or the adjective great was attached to a coach where a motivator, great motivator was also not in there. Well, I'm not saying that there wasn't point. there. I'm not saying that there wasn't a coach. There may have been. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But every every great coach I've ever heard of across sports anyway, they were also a great motivator. And they knew how and when. The, the key is their, their timing. They knew how and when to do it. They didn't do it all the time. They pick their spots, especially in a professional, especially baseball, where you get this marathon of a season. You can't go in there with a rah rah sis boom ba speech every start of a series. They'll, you'll, they'll lose you. You'll lose them in a month. Okay, you have to know how and when to do it. So there's an art to it. So I think it is necessary because of the human element. We're not dealing with. It's not just a bottom line. Because here's the other thing. There's other people talking to that same human being. You're trying to motivate and tell them different shit. You, you, they'll trade you. You'll, you'll get somewhere below, which may or may not also be true. But if you, first of all, if you're a professional athlete, one thing you don't want to be labeled as is, is someone who's uncoachable right. or can't be motivated because that's not going to, that's going to get you a paycheck. And that's going to hurt you from getting a paycheck. So I think it's a necessary evil. In a, in a perfect world, should we have to be motivated? We have enough things to motivate. I agree with Tom there, in principle. No, but no, but no, we're not no. dealing with that. I'm not saying that that's not what I'm arguing at all. I'm not arguing that like you're saying it's not a part. It shouldn't be a part. I'm of just saying like the definition of coaching, I don't think involves motivating. I know for a fact that it does. Well, let me look. Let me read a definition. Okay. Coaching is a form of development in which an experienced person called a coach supports a learner or client in achieving a specific personal or professional goal by providing training and guidance. Mm-hmm. That's different than helping someone want to do it. 
right? I just, I have never sat down and talked to any coach. I coached for 22 years, too. Yeah. And I've sat in many meetings with many coaches. And everybody's got their own style. But one commonality is motivation. They always talk about it. How do you get them motivated? How do you keep them motivated? What do you do? I've had people pick my brain up. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you do to get them motivated when things, what do you do without, you know, pushing it over? You know, there's a line there. Where is it? For you, how does it work? How do you do it to work? Because everybody's trying to learn from other people because there's a more than one way to do it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is your personnel is going to change every couple of years, so you have to change with it. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, my father used to know, my father could get in my face and, and call me or whatever, and I'd go out and score 40 points. He couldn't do that to <laughs> one of my teammates, though. Right. So, but he, but he, so he would, but it was all about how he, he, he did it in different ways because he knew his personnel and he was always changing with the sport. He could do it in any sport that I saw. And I thought that was an incredible gift that my father had. And I, and I've heard it about a lot of coaches, mm -hmm. their ability to do it and, and relate to their personnel and find ways to push these guys buttons because they're all different. In terms. Yeah. So I think it is a part of it just because it's not in the, in the verbiage doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. Um, well, it's just weird. They because... have, they have motivational seminars where they teach coaches on motivational strategies. I've sat in one of those. Yeah, I don't so think if, that's if it, true coaching. Well, why would you have a seminar on it if it wasn't a part of it? Because you can make money on it. But I'm just saying, like, when... Okay, you're not so, going to make money off it if it's not something that people need to learn no, how to no. do. So, so let, me, let me try to explain where I'm coming from. It's a, it's, a, it's a pointless argument, but that's what I specialize in. Okay? So hear me out. <laughs> So, I don't disagree. There, there, that's there's a few <laughs> things I love more than a pointless argument. Okay, I'm serious. I love them. I, well, um, we've had a slew of them. That's right. Gonna, um, the evidence backs this. And up. They don't anger me. They, 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 you know, they infuse me with energy. Okay. Um, so, at my corporate job, we offer coaching to customers, um, and as a customer, I've actually received this coaching. And basically, the coaching involves a professional coach who's mm -hmm. certified to do this type of, you know, uh -huh. development or teaching. service with you. Teaching. Um, and they ask you questions. They try to ask questions to help you understand what is it that you truly want to do? Mm -hmm. What things are in your way keeping you from doing it? And then ask questions helping you to build a plan. If at any time you say, I don't want to do this, they do not try to convince you to keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so... Has a player ever said that to a coach? I don't want to do this anymore? Fine, you're off the team. Right, but then why, yeah. why, is there any, why is there any need for motivation then? If everybody wants to do it's it, it's not about it's not about wanting them them wanting to do it. It's about how how hard because it, look at coaching like anything else is a performance based. You're you're graded on wins and losses, number one. Okay, and if you want to get paid, you got to win. If you want to win, you got to be able to motivate your players to do something that they might normally not want to do. Okay, and there's a number of ways to do that. You can throw the money at them too, but if they're talented, they're going to get other offers. Yeah. How do you get them to perform at a certain level? Right? It's not just about X's and O's. It's about getting to do something that... I mean, they don't yeah, want. I mean, he's not sure, that, but they're that not all the way coaching. in. Coaching. Yeah, but that's part of it. <clears throat> that's a, that's that a part of coaching. I think it's a separate thing. I think they should be called coaches and motivators. Most great coaches... What a great, stupid argument. Most great coaches are great motivators. That's I don't all. know if that's true. Actually, I, I've had, I haven't heard of a great coach that where that wasn't a ta didn't come up somewhere in the... Well, well why is he great? And that's one of the reasons they point out that, that he or she is great. Their ability to motivate. To get people normally that would be unmotivated to get them to do something they don't normally want to do. <laughs> okay? For whatever reason. Maybe it's because they, they, they get them to see the, the betterment of themselves. That's going to better their situation and not just their that's own. True. And that's I guess, motivation. I guess you could ask great questions to help somebody learn and understand why they are motivated to do something. Well, this is the thing about motivating people. You can't motivate someone until you know what makes them. Because then you know what they're passionate about. You know what they what their wants and needs are, and that's that's what you use to motivate them. And I know because I've done that. Okay, I've done that as a coach. When I find out what a kid's passionate about. Those are the things I'll throw in their face to get them to, to play to do things better or work harder at something. You know, I have a kid now that I'm coaching who tells me he wants to play Division One basketball. I said, No, you don't. 
He says, why? I said, I know what a Division I basketball player looks like, meaning not talent. I know how they prepare and what they take seriously and what their priorities are. I've seen your priority list. Nowhere, okay, is the number one thing Fortnite. <laughs> Nowhere. Video games might be somewhere on something they love to do when they have a path, but that's not the number one thing. <laughs> Kyler Murray, for Kyler Murray, it is. That's why he has a clause in his contract now, doesn't he? <laughs> no, they took it out. Did they? I don't know why they did that. It was there for a reason. Somebody, somebody spotted this. And did, when you put that in a contract, one person didn't come up with that. That was that was something that went around a room, <laughs> and, they, and well, they threw it in there. Signed it, and oh, yeah, he signed it. Yeah, so he read it, or his hair. He, he, he didn't read his lawyer read it. And then he got mad. You signed it. You so you that means you agree with it. <laughs> it's like what the hell? I promise I won't play my video games in the office. It's not that you want to play. It's a study that film more. They weren't saying you can't play video games. They were saying, dude, will you do some studying, please? No, you can't. I think he wasn't allowed to play video you games. You can only get it. so far on talent. Oh, they had a specific amount of hours per week he could play? I think so. I didn't read that. Let me see. I remember we had to have at least four hours of outside of practice of video of tape time. Maybe you're right. Outside of practice. Outside yeah. of the normal film sessions. Yeah, you might be right. He had to have an additional four on his own, which was how I read it. And that's another way you can't play video. <laughs> but if that was the reason he wasn't doing it, then that's a problem, too. Because that's what he gets paid to do. So, yeah. Um, so there was a clause that re required him to spend four hours per game week on independent study. He wasn't playing. He wasn't. He wasn't given four hours a week. He, apparently, he wasn't. If they put it in writing and made him sign it, <laughs> you're not getting this money. <laughs> okay. And when they took it out, did they take it out or did they amend it? So Warren Moon says, the Arizona Cardinals four-hour film clause in Kyler Murray's new contract is a slap in the face to all African-American quarterbacks. Let's keep reading. Keep reading. His comments were in response to the five-year, $230.5 million contract extension Murray signed with the Cardinals. It included a clause requiring him to spend four hours per game week on independent study, namely watching game film. Yeah. Um, Moon said, it's something we were always accused of back in the day when they didn't let us black quarterbacks play, that we were lazy, that we didn't study, that we couldn't be leaders, that we weren't smart. So all those different things just kind of came to surface after we put all that stuff to bed over the years. And just because of this deal that's going on between Arizona and Kyler. So, yeah, very embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. The Cardinals removed the clause, releasing a statement that it was clearly perceived in ways that were never intended. While the team said its confidence in Murray is as high as it's ever been, Moon believes the public perception about the quarterback has already been tarnished. The damage has been done. He'll have this riding on him every time he does something wrong in a football game. They're going to say, see, that's the reason why that happened is because he didn't study enough film last week. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Hmm. What do you think about that? Hmm. And then Kyler says, to think that I can accomplish everything that I've accomplished in my career and not be a student of the game and not have that passion and not take this serious, it's disrespectful. Why are you fine? I don't know. That's the thing. But see, I heard that he made a comment a couple years ago where he said, um, I'm not one of those guys that watches film all week. So that's where he put that out there. When I was listening to New York Sports Talk, they said he's he made quoted that as saying that. Right. But I got to find that now. Does, does Warren Moon know about that quote? <laughs> that's, the, that's the part that's tough. Um, but, uh, I, but, I think, but I think there is merit to what Warren Moon is saying. There is definitely merit to what he's saying because I remember there's plenty I've of, heard it. I've heard people say There's it. plenty of lazy-ass white athletes out yes, there. Yes, there would, are. That would never have a clause like that in their contract. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's plenty of <coughs> white athletes that have gotten fat and ate themselves out of the league. Yes, there are. Just as there have been black athletes yes, and, there are. you know, Hispanic athletes, whatever, you know, yep. all different kinds. Uh, yep. Um, so I think there's merit to what he's saying. Um, Kyler 
Murray admitted last year that he doesn't spend extensive, extensive time watching film. So this is from Pro Football Talk. Pretty wrong um, source. Uh, Mike Florio. This is a month ago. Monday's stunning news that the contract for Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray contains a homework clause. Mm-hmm. Wow. Can I have one of those? I have last two. Oh, damn. I'm not even going to be able to reach this one. I had to tip them off. The Cardinals didn't mandate a weekly commitment to engage in at least four hours of independent study if they believed Murray already was going to do that. The Cardinals, who made Murray look bad for not studying enough and themselves look worse for paying him that much money, but it's even, in like that clause even in the contract. though they think he doesn't study enough, added that, added that clause because they believed they needed it. They believed it based on, presumably, his actions through three years with the team. Whereas the case may be, his admissions in the New York Times profile last December, Murray admitted that he doesn't burn the midnight oil while studying pig's, pigskin celluloid. I think I was blessed with the cognitive skills to just go out there and just see it before it happens, Murray said via Sarah, Sarah Kazeel, um or Kazeli of 98.7 Arizona Sports. I'm not one of those guys that's going to sit there and kill myself watching film. I don't sit there for 24 hours and break down this team and that team and watch every game because in my head I see so much. And then he goes out and does what he did against the Rams. Hmm. 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 So... That's a very interesting one, Tom. It is. Um. <laughs> so I think, I uh, think to a certain extent, I think Warren Moon is right. No, what Warren Moon's talking about mm-hmm. is, is I know it's happened. There's always, I just don't know that it applies here. Black quarterbacks mm-hmm. have always been I yeah, mean, just I like black know. people in society. Yeah, but they've always, this has been there for, yeah. I mean, they always have the deck stacked against them and people saying yeah. reasons why they can't do shit. Yeah, and that was, a, and that, and, what Warren was talking about is 100% true. In terms mm-hmm. of that, that has happened. And I believe it probably still does. Um, it's just like, oh, the, but the black quarterback's the, the, coming out. The problem is, oh, is he that... he can't read defenses. The problem is, is that Kyler sure. Murray makes a couple of statements like that. And then you kind of, well, if his team has read that, if you're his team, what do you think? But it's one And then you see him play the way he did against the Rams, where he looked like he'd never played football before, and it was a playoff game. Okay, and yes, yeah, there were there were other factors here. He's missing his number one receiver. He, there are other things going on here. But some <laughs> of the some of the things. decisions he made in that game, <laughs> Carson Wentz like, Carson Wentz like, and Carson is white. Okay, so I don't think I don't know that in this particular case if that fully applies when he's yeah, but no, when but he's saying what he's saying. I know for a fact but, it has happened. But think about this. And it's still, it's, I believe think, it's still done. Think about the disrespect to actually put that in a contract. So you're telling me you're giving this guy $230 million and you doubt his work ethic? Where are your priorities? Either you're full of shit or you're full of shit. Or you know what I'm saying? Or you're saying, look, I'll give you $230 million, but here's what you're going to do for me. And it's going to be on, in the contract. But my thing is, like, so basically... I don't know. I'm not a billionaire. I'm just saying... No, but just... But think about it. If I was going to pay somebody that kind of money, and I'm reading that... I wouldn't have any doubt. Reading that, what you said, what he said, I would have doubts about him. My thing is... (laughs) What I'm saying is... Not every African-American quarterback, Warren. But him? No, but... Yes. But but my thing is this. (laughs) If I was going to give somebody that much money, I wouldn't have any doubt. So there would be no need for a clause. NFL How is. could you give somebody that much money if you thought they weren't committed enough to spend four hours a week? If you think that that's the difference between him just being another good quarterback who bounces, then you're full of shit. Or then you're full or of shit. a guy that whose number you can retire in your rafters one day. You think that's the difference? Yeah, you're full of shit. How do you know? Th- th- that's never been the difference. How? Do, oh, really? How four many quarterbacks? Hours of film how time? many quarterbacks? Tom Brady does ten times more than that. Exactly. Okay, but I don't, he's going to be Tom Brady. I'm going to say he's going to be the goat. But I'm saying if he's he's openly saying he doesn't, he's making more than Tom Brady. And he, yeah, that's that's a joke too. He's nowhere near as good as Tom Brady, <laughs> and everybody knows it. And this is one of the reasons why. Okay, this wow. is because because Tom Brady's not the athlete he is, but Tom Brady reads defense better than he runs. That's a fact. Tom Brady can figure out even for the ball is height. Okay. Okay. And he's proven that. So don't you can't. This isn't about time. No, but the point is, you're talking about giving somebody this kind of money, and you're like, well, here's what I want you to do for me. And by the way, is that an unreasonable request? 
No, but my point is, it shouldn't be in his contract. It's understood. Apparently it wasn't if he's saying that and not understanding that he's going to say that and someone's going to read it. No, he said that. And he's going to get back to his he boss. He said that more than a year ago. My he's, point is, if you doubt that someone is committed enough to give four hours a week and you're about to hand them $230 million, you're a joke. What's your alternative? Don't pay him. And then you lose him and you get nothing. If you don't think he's committed enough to watch four hours of film, how can you get Maybe he's a young money? kid who's got a lot of talent, but he's to start to develop as a quarterback. Then you need to trust time. him enough to say... No, you need to tell him, you, this is what I want from you. You need to trust him enough to say, we're not going to embarrass you. This is not about intelligence. This is about work ethic. Exactly. That's not to say he's not intelligent. It says he's lazy. No, no. Mm -hmm. I said you need to trust him enough. Right, that's what Warren Moon is saying. It's a call. Out. It's a, it's one of those. things. Maybe they had that conversation and they didn't like the answer that he gave them. Then they shouldn't give him two hundred and thirty million. Well, if you're speculating wh where can we replace him as a quarterback, because the rest of the team is playoff caliber, that's so not just an easy. You can't just swap flop out of the quarterback then, for him. Then that means he's your guy. Well, then you, then you say, look, what I'm asking for you is 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 reason. Four hours of addition. That's not a, what is that, 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 That's one hour a day. But that doesn't <laughs> go in NFL contract. How do I know that? I've never read. I've never read. I don't know that. Do you know How that? I always take that stand whenever I'm making a point. I don't know. Because you're you're giving you me. You have never heard saying, this before. You're saying no, I haven't. Right. But that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. And I'm not saying it's. Listen, I I've I heard mean, what Warren Moon's talking think about. We would have heard about it if any other quarterback getting two hundred million dollars or more had a clause I don't, like that. I don't think we it, would know about it. I don't think this is about his... I think they believe he's intelligent, but they wanted to maximize his potential. We're not talking about intelligence. Well, more Moon's talking about because they don't think they're unintelligent. I think that that's no, true. he said we're called lazy. Yeah, but, well, if he's... That's what he said. That statement that, he, <laughs> that Kyler Murray made didn't help him sure. at all. No, it did not. It didn't help him at all because now it's on the... Now you said this no, publicly. But at the same time, like, so many people have gotten caught. And so many people have had weaknesses or bad statements about something. Yeah. But you don't see a, an embarrassing statement in the contract about that. You know what I'm saying? So give me, like, so if a person, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, yeah, a, I'm trying to, okay, so, like, let's I'm say. I'm saying like, that because there's different things, there's different things to that, is what I'm saying. I mean, I'm just saying. I don't doubt that Kyler Murray is an intelligent human being or that he can't read a defense. I think what they're talking about is if you put a little more time trying to figure out or watch what these guys are doing, it's going to make you better. Because you'll you'll see something in a game that because you watched the film, you picked up where you might they might do something you didn't see on film because so you, you didn't watch it and you don't know. Versus if you know, then you can adjust and do your thing appropriately because you've now you know it's coming or you can anticipate it. That's what film study is all about. Everybody knows what film study is well, about. If it's he's, about whether or not you need to do that in a contract. I think that there's nothing wrong with putting that in the contract. If that's if he's if he says I don't really care about that much about film study. I just don't know I'm just how relying you can on my give talent. somebody that much money if you don't think they're going to watch four hours of video a week. Maybe they think that's the one thing that's keeping him from being the best quarterback in that conference. Maybe he's got all the talent. He does. He's got a strong arm. No he's a he's a he's a team guy. Everybody likes him. But he's a team guy. He'd be watching. He'd be watching the video with his teammates. Well, they, listen, I'm not the, the freaking owner. All I'm saying is, if you think that's the one thing between him and reaching his potential, no I don't see the flaw in putting that into a contract. That's, a, that's saying he's not intelligent. It says his work ethic isn't uh, where it needs to be. There are a lot of Peter, there, There's a lot of brilliant people out there that are lazy. They just are. Right, but and only I Kyler people, Murray has the clubs. Kyler Murray is the one who wants $230 million. So the owner's going, you want $230 million? See, that's yeah. where I call bullshit. Call all you want. It, he signed it. Yeah. Kyler Murray signed that yeah. contract. Yeah. How, let me ask you this. How did he read that and then sign that if he was so offended? Well, I mean, if I was offended, $30 million. Then, then do the four it. hours I'd a week. sign it. Then do the extra four hours a week. It's and not even extra. call it a day. They're well, saying independent study outside of the team stuff. There's team film sessions. He's and got, for 230, you've got to be doing some of your own work. I, I don't see why that's that big of a deal. Okay? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why it's a big deal. Because he came out and said he doesn't do that. So now they're like, look, we like him, but we gotta he's gotta change this one thing. Okay? But and we wanna keep him, but we got he gotta change this, this one thing. But don't you okay? think they could have talked to him about that? I don't they might have. 
Look, somebody had to read that contract before they signed it. Are you telling me somebody, a lawyer read that or an agent and glossed over it and signed it? That's a problem. <laughs> no, I think he agreed to it. Then what you, you, that's my problem. Why, then why did he sign it? Yeah, no, that, I mean, why he, he wanted his 230. Well, he got it for an extra four now, hours week again. Damn. How about the the, the, the the torture, the friggin', oh, what he must be going through. An extra hour a day. How's no, he going to no, persevere? No. <laughs> it just seems like. I think Warren Moon is 100% accurate because I've heard that. The, I don't think it applies here. I think he's made that statement. They read that statement and they said, well, then they looked at, then they looked at his performances because they, they can watch film of everything. And they're like, well, he didn't pick up that blitz or he didn't do this or he did that. And then he comes up, well, I don't really like to watch a lot of film. <laughs> if you were an owner and you like that, but, but, but you know that about him? You're going to put that in the contract because, by the way, that's not a that's not a deal breaking. That's a deal making thing, actually. Okay, for I'll do it, sure. Because <laughs> what's four more hours? If I'm him, I'm like, I only got to do four more hours a week. That's it. He's on salary. I'm just saying, all I got to do is another extra hour a day. Is what it breaks down to. Yes, yes, a thousand times over. But I'm now it's a big time. deal because he's. I'm just saying. I understand why more Warren Moon's upset about this, but I don't think I think he came out and said what he said. And they're like, and they look at his performances going, why is he, he gets to here, but he can't get to here. What is it? It's not his talent. Yeah. It's not his arm strength. Everybody mm -hmm. seems to like him. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. He's got to do, he's not stupid. What's the problem? Yeah. That's the thing. Okay. Motivation. I don't know, Tom. Okay. But I don't think this is about the color of his skin. Because if that was what it was, no one, they wouldn't hand it to him three minutes. I don't give you what? Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> this ain't about the color of his skin. This is about, they think he's good. They want him to be great. And they think if he does that, minimum, he can be. How is that a... But Warren Moon says, because he's a black quarterback, I understand. they are highlighting the laziness clause. Which I think there could be some merit to in this. I'm not saying, I'm just saying that he's, he said what he said. So no doubt. There's no, evidence no. of it. No, it's not like they're just. But they didn't just on a whim did this. They read that, then they're looking as we're going. You know, there's a there's a, hey, there's a commonality here, <laughs> okay? But I'm just. He saying. spends more time playing Fortnite than he does doing this, and this is his job. Fortnite isn't his job. <laughs> if you're if you're a boss, what would you think? Forget everything else. What would you think of that? And you're going to give this guy a raise? or a, No, you're not. Well, that's my thing, though. If I'm going to give a guy a raise... Well, you're going to at least say, look, I want to give you this money, but here's what you're going to do for me. It's a compromise. I could never that's see... That's all it is. I could never see myself giving someone that much money if I didn't think they were going to be self-motivated enough to do that bare minimum. That That's the last thing I'll say. Could youth have something? He is young. Could his youth have something to do with this? Not, I mean, look, not everybody's Tom there's Brady. There's plenty of young people that are doing amazing things in this world. Yeah, and there's also plenty of young people that are like him, who are brilliant but lazy, or very talented but, but you lazy. You don't know that. And lazy, they're white people, lazy isn't about, I understand what Warren Moon's talking about, okay, but I'm just saying, I don't think this applies to him here. I think he said that, they read it, and, when, and then they looked at his performances and they're going, why can't he get past this level? We, we, when he think he, we think he's better than this and can be better than this. Okay, let's put this in the contract then, see how he does. We'll give you the money. All right, so they're they going to do this for see, us. So they couldn't motivate him to do it. They just did. They gave him $230 That's million. That's motivation. Do. I'd say $230 million is motivation. No. Yeah. Money's not motivation. Yes, it is. Money is what people... If it wasn't for money, most people wouldn't go to their jobs in the morning. Most people hate their jobs. That's a baseline motivation. It's still motivation, Tom. You can call it whatever you want. At the end of the day, it's motivation. Okay? Most people don't like their jobs, but the paycheck. That's what right. motivates to keep going. But you're not doing four stand. hours extra. Maybe you're not, but you're not getting offered two hundred thirty million dollars. You know? <laughs> okay. I, I wonder, Tom, if I offered you two hundred thirty, would you do four extra hours of recruitment work during the week for two hundred thirty million dollars? There it is, folks. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I think about. I have to seriously consider. It. <laughs> I have to talk to my agent, my wife, yeah. my tennis oh, no. coach. Maybe, my pick, my Maybe for instructor. a year. Maybe for a year. Maybe for a... <laughs> <laughs> then I'd retire. <laughs> anyway, I don't. I understand where Warren is coming is coming from, and I know that that's been true in the past, and it may still be true now. But I think with Kyler Murray, I think, dude, it still happens. I, I said I think it's still true now. I'm saying I think in the case of Kyler Murray, though, where he put that out there, which basically opens him up to this criticism, that hurts. And then he goes out there and plays the way. First of all, his play backed it up too. Look what happened to him in that game. He went from a, a potentially like a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback to what the hell was that? Okay, it was like, so there's re there's reasons for this. It's not one reason. There's, and I guarantee you, it's not the color of his skin. At least not in this case. 
But see, I don't think it is. Okay. I think they like him and they want to retire his number, and they think that this could be the thing that gets him over the top. But let's say Danny. I already Jones. think highly of him. Danny Jones, right? Who's been who can be a he's done some idiotic things. After this <laughs> year, if he gets offered a contract, it won't be two I don't, or three ca- I don't care if it's worth twenty million. Mm-hmm. Will there be a clause that says you need to study film for four hours extra a week to make sure you don't fumble and throw picks? That would depend on No, it won't be in there. Why not? What if he has 30 interceptions? First of all, he won't get a contract. There's never. <laughs> there's never so, in somebody who's contracted out to do that. Well, again, but Danny Dimes didn't go out there in the world and say and make that statement. Right, but he sucked Either. enough to be like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you developing? Are you the GM has enough? said they have not set this kid up to do anything other than fail. They, they, they've said it's not even his fault. The GM has said that. Okay, but take any player who's stinking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Making mistakes. I'm listening. Then they sign a contract. But there's nothing in there that says, like, <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> Just because it didn't get, didn't get advertised. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's not there. <laughs> well, have you seen some of these contracts? They're like books. No. <laughs> not, never they're like, never they aren't them. one page in the new side. <laughs> no, there are. With, 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 when you're talking about that kind of money, that contract reads like a book. Okay, it's anywhere between thirty and fifty pages, probably bigger. Really? And, oh yeah, because it's all cut. This is through two hundred thirty million dollars we're talking about here. Yeah, there's going to be all kinds of stipulations in a contract like that. What if he gets hurt? How much of it? How much of it? There's, there's a certain amount that's guaranteed. So if something does happen, he still gets this amount of money. And there's this. And there's, there's oh, if his team makes if he makes the Pro Bowl, if the team makes there's incentives. Then there's the code of conduct policy. There's all these other things where they can void the where he can void the contract. And all the crap. Okay, so there's all kinds of ifs and buts and coffee and nuts. In those damn contracts, because with that kind of money, you got to cover everything. You do, okay. And by the way, billionaires are not billionaires by accident. They understand that when they're going to transfer any kind of money anywhere. The, the idea is to you spend money to make money. You know why they're giving Kyler Murray two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed? Because they think that he can help turn that that organization into a five and a half billion dollar business. Right, but they don't think he's committed enough to watch four hours of film just by asking him to do it. I'm just saying he put that out there, and that's probably one of the things that put the suspicion in their head because he said it. And then he went out and played like you're, garbage. You yourself is saying he's, he's young. He, that could be part of it. It might just simply be a mo- It doesn't. I'm just saying it could be. It, it, there's, it, so why, why can't I'm saying it may not be. Enough to grow I'm just. Up I'm opening up the possibility that it may not be about the fact that he's African American. May have nothing to of do with it. Of course. That. That's all I'm saying. I understand where Warren Moon is coming from. I'm not saying that he's wrong. I'm just saying that this kid said that. And then he went out and played like garbage. And if you're owner and this is what's holding it up, you're going to put that in there. It's a deal maker. Because what if what if Kyler Murray goes, you know what? Four, I'm not doing four hours. Then that, that tells you something about him. He's not willing to put in four more hours for his to improve. No, you know what? You're not getting that money. That's Come what off. I'm saying. Well, they put it in there and he signed it. So that means he agreed to do I it. I just, to me, I wouldn't want my NFL, I wouldn't want my franchise quarterback to need that clause to and if I thought he needed it, he wouldn't be my franchise quarterback. If I were Kyler Murray, I would use that as motivation so when I win the Super Bowl, that I can throw it back in every asshole's face who threw it in mine. <laughs> because as a competitor, talk about motivation. There's some motivation for you. Not I'm the victim. Victims don't get $230 million most of the time. <laughs> so regardless of the situation, most victims don't get $230 million if they're actually a <laughs> okay. But to me, I don't know that it's about the color of his skin. I think it's more about what he said and what his performance in big games has. has I think that's what led to it. That's all. And I think he's a hell of a player, and I think he can be a he can be a Hall of Famer if he continues to improve. He's young, um, so he's got to mature a little bit. But he's young. All guys, everybody's got to mature a little bit when they're twenty five. He's not. You're not fully developed as a person at twenty five. Dude, I can't find how many pages are in an. I don't think it's. A, I don't think there's an exact number. I just think there's a lot of them, and there could be more, there could be less, depending on who it is. You know, if you're Tom Brady and you get seven rings, how long do that contract? I think his resume is already written. I think you know what you're going to get with him. So, or someone like that, or Matthew Stafford, a guy who's now added that to his resume. Maybe his next contract's a little bit shorter, okay? Because he's done it. Or Aaron Donald, maybe the best okay, defensive lineman. That's a six-page contract. Probably for a guy who's still not even on the roster anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you will get ten dollars. You will get ten dollars, and you might get to the third preseason. All right, it's getting late. Yeah. Anyway, we got to end this segment. We wasn't supposed to go this long. <laughs> Sorry, I started a pointless argument. You really did. That's, that's I love it. 
That's all right. It also makes you think a little there bit. There's one about coaching. We did motivation. with motivation really factor in coaching? Coaching um, versus motivation. Coaching, coaching, yeah. Is it the same? Is it not separate? Is it not to be? Is not true? Is it necessary? Whatever. So he covered preseason football. Danny Dimes accurate, but is he actually that pick was not? You see that replay. You'll agree it wasn't. At least for one night, he showed some accuracy and some maturity. So we'll see what that looks like going forward. Um, Patriots look pretty solid all weekend. Again, it was it was Carolina, so they were great salt, but no injuries, no injuries. And um, Mets go to Yankee Stadium. The Mets go to Yankee. Stadium. Is it two? It's a home and home. It's just two, right? Just two. Two. So we'll be back on Wednesday night. We'll have a full recap of that. Also, week three, final week of the preseason coming up. Final cuts. Who's going to make these rosters or not? There may be somebody. Tom's like, why or me? Why would they cut him? And he does. This could happen. So we'll talk about all that stuff on Wednesday night. So it'll be midweek. Hey, tomorrow, man up Monday, and then Tim back Tuesday. Get her done. Okay, I am RJ. That is a disappearing Tom Izzo who doesn't even feel the need. Oh, there he is. He came Sorry. Back. Okay. We will talk to you guys Wednesday night. Have a great start to your week. 72 hours on the way. Talk to you soon. Adios.